thousand stand up for PM's nomination. Rivals of Kairuku Hiri Open Seat nominates. And a graduation with innovation. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thank you for joining me for Saturday's news. Thousands flocked to Pangia Station to witness the nomination of sitting MP and Prime Minister Peter O'Neill yesterday. O'Neill was backed by five sitting People's National Congress Party MPs as a show of strength and unity. The Warupo and Yarra Ward Councils nominated the sitting MP. It was a slow start for the Yalibu Pangya people as cloud cover threatened this significant event for the nomination of the sitting MP. Both the young and old clustered to Pangya Station as the 2017 national election fever spread throughout the country. As the sitting MP arrived in his hometown, it was chaotic on the streets of Pangya Station. A spirited Mr. O'Neill was escorted by PNC MPs who took the streets of Pangya Station to the district government headquarters. After almost a 20-minute walk, the sitting Prime Minister was welcomed by a rousing crowd. <laughs> O'Neill wasted no time in filling his form before leaders of seven ward councils stepped forward with his nomination fee. Despite being blamed for the current economic downfall and other allegations, the sitting MP is confident in retaining and form the next government. There's now triple provinces, Roenga, Ella and Southern Islands. You make a simpler member, suppose so you make some strong or one blood party, make a token meal, no has one blood man by moving baby. No has one blood man by moving baby. In his speech, O'Neill spoke highly of completing development plans initiated by the ruling coalition government in delivering essential government services to the lowest level of government. He says stability in leadership is necessary. So no good thing or saying give me fix of the problem business. So now by even changing leadership, now behind the double man but got a miracle legal. Yes. One of them can miracle you like looking at your way. Yeah. <laughs> PNC stronghold and sitting Taripuri MP James Marape Digled is undivided support and believes the Yalibu Pange MP has delivered for his people in the past two terms. 2007 to 2011, you look him handbag or no God? Walk my paper and make him now. You want him to come Pange again, but you come Prime Minister of Papua again. Less than 15 in 10 candidates are expected to challenge the sitting MP. But many locals say O'Neill will retain his seat to move the district forward. Only time will tell when the polls open next month. Jack Lopave, Jr. National MTV News. Moses Murray was the first candidate to pay his nomination fee to contest the East Sipic regional seat. The seat that was held by founding father of Papua New Guinea, Grand Chief Sir Michael Sumare, for 49 years. MTV News talked to Mr. Murray yesterday, a day after he nominated, he was, after he nominated in Wewak, East Sipic province. I've been in the legal profession for almost 26 years as a private lawyer. I've uh, represented uh, uh, some big clients in my life as a lawyer. Uh, I've stood for elections three times, 2002, 2007, and 2012. Obviously, uh, Sir Michael Somare was then defending his seat, and he defended it successfully because the people of Isipic province went for him. Uh, but uh, he's now decided to go out of the race. And so now the race is open for not only myself, but a few others. The sitting Karuku Hiri MP was nominated today in a bid to retain his seat. Peter Isoaimo was elected through a by-election in 2014 after a court of disputed returns. Supporters accompanied Isoaimo to the Karuku Hiri headquarters in Konedobu, where he was nominated. Bethany Herriman with this report. A convoy today on the Poroporana freeway. Kairi Kuhiri sitting MP Peter Isoaimo led by supporters going to nominate. We're coming back, don't worry. 
The National Alliance strongman is running to retain his seat. The first time MP signed the papers and remains optimistic about his campaign. In politics also you cannot satisfy uh, everyone constituent or voter, but you know, uh, through service delivery we've, we've done the best we could. Uh, we've gone miles in fact uh, in terms of service delivery. So. Iso Aimo says the last three years was challenging, but the people will decide on who represents them in the next five years. The Karikuhiri elections are expected to be a close one. Former Education Minister Paru Ahi will be challenging the sitting MP. A court decision allowed for a by-election in 2014 where Iso Aimo ousted Paru, who was already PNC's Education Minister. We need a responsible government. But Iso Aimo is confident that he can retain Kariku Hiri's seat. Unfortunately, you know, as much as we are really hungry to serve our people, another election has caught up with us. So we will have to go through the election process now to get us installed again, uh, to continue uh, implementing all those approved. And but whether Iso Aimo returns depends on the people voting for him. Bethany Harriman, National MTV News. Just an hour after Karuku Hiri sitting MP Peter Isuaimo was nominated, his biggest rival walked in the same office to nominate. Paruaihi is running for office again. Today he signed the papers after losing to sitting MP Peter Isuaimo in a 2014 by-election. Aihi says he is confident that he will return to office. Bethany Harriman with this report. We're coming back, don't worry. <laughs> About an hour after sitting MP Peter Iso Aimo left the Kairiku Hiri district headquarters, another candidate came to nominate. The candidate happens to be Iso Aimo's biggest rival, former education minister Paru Ahi, nominated today. In contrast to Iso Aimo, Ahi arrived quietly with close supporters. The politics have started, the former education minister already laying allegations against the sitting MP. There have also been inequitable distribution of government goods and services. Paru Ahi has asked the Electoral Commission to create a leveled playing field for all candidates. He lost the Karikuhiri seat to Peter Isaimo in a 2014 by-election after going to court. I call on the Electoral Commission uh, because of my experiences of the last two elections and especially the by-election uh, to ensure to provide a level playing field for all the candidates that are running. While Ahi and Iso Aimo have history, there are 30 other candidates vying for the seat. Bethany Hariman, National MTV News. Morabe Governor Kelly Naru says he is confident of retaining his seat this election. Naru says based on his experience in the 2012 national election, which he won by a huge margin. Martha Lewis reports from Lee. Naru says he has the support in all the nine districts and 33 LLGs of Morobe province. The support has seen him opening a number of housemans in each of the districts built by his supporters. Actually, I am very relaxed and I am as cool as I can ever be because in my heart and uh, in my faith, I believe that I uh, I am already returned as a member. In fact, I believe that it is just a matter of the people confirming their preference and faith in me. He says he will return to parliament given the kind of support he has been getting from the people and claims he will win by the first count. But uh, I believe this time around I can, uh, I can uh, make it back in a big way and uh, I am confident from uh, the uh, kind of support coming in that uh, I will come in on the first count. Naru will be nominating on Thursday. He is also the party leader of the Christian Democratic Party. He has endorsed nine candidates in the nine districts with at least 25 candidates in other provinces to contest. In total, for this province, uh, we would, be, we would be endorsing uh, uh, nine candidates, uh, including myself. 
the only seat that uh, we are looking at not endorsing a candidate is uh, Huon Gulf. Uh, the others we will put our candidates and um, countrywide, nationwide, we, we're looking at uh, putting up to uh, between 25 and 30 candidates. Matalubis National MTV News, Lei. Hundreds turned up at Lay's top town area to witness the nomination of two Pangu party candidates for the Lay Open and Morbe regional seats. Party leader Sam Basil escorted the two candidates, Ginsen Saunu, who will contest the regional, while Samson Ambil for Lay Open. Pangu has nine candidates in all the nine districts of Morbe. Pangus Moraba Regional Candidate Gibson Saunu and Lay Open Candidate Samson Ambil were nominated at around 2 p.m. this afternoon. They were escorted by the party leader Sam Basil. Gibson Saunu, who will be contesting the regional seat, is confident. He is the first candidate for the Moraba Regional seat to be nominated. He is up against at least 25 candidates, including the sitting member of parliament Kelly Naru, and the former member, Luta Wenge. I'm very, very confident because uh, as I move around to nine districts, they're telling me that there is nothing happening and uh, they want change. And they want uh, somebody to make change to happen. Meanwhile, lay open candidate Samson Ambil is up against 45 candidates, but he says he has every confidence to win. He has been in lay for a number of years and he is why he contested the lay open seat. Me looking, me stop 25 years late in a minute, but me looking more lazy this stuff than I'm stuff yet. This play me like anything. Apart from the two Pangu candidates nominated today, party leader Sam Basil says Pangu is putting up at least 60 candidates across the country. We are comfortable to run 50 or 60. We are still uh, um, negotiating the outcome of this until the uh, return of, um, sorry, the close up nomination. Mata Lewis, National MTV News, Lay. Pangu Party leader says the party is for the first time breaking barriers in Morbe province. Sam Basil referred to the lay open seat where they have put a candidate who is not of Morbe origin. He says the party is PNG United and must promote that. City. So uh, Pangu Party decided to um, uh, pick a candidate of a Highlands origin, but he grew up in Lay City. Uh, we decided to pick going out of our norm to pick a candidate from that area. Uh, reason, reason being that um, uh, too many times we have had uh, Morobians saying that Morobe for Morobe. Now, of course, yeah, I'm proud of Morobe, of course, but uh, what have we done in the last 40 years in Lake City for Morobe for Morobe? We've, we, you look at uh, the uh, Buriban village, you look at uh, Yanga, uh, most of the time we have Ahi people um, occupying the seat. Now, most of the houses and the villages there do not have access to water, do not have access to electricity. And um, I believe that um, uh, out of the nine seats, Lei will, will be a Papua New Guinea seat. And uh, it, it is good for um, Pangu Party to grab the opportunity now to make sure that uh, uh, we save the embarrassment of having a Highlands Party uh, endorsing a Highlands candidate in Morobe and winning the seat. We want to control that person. Once he wins, they will be guided under the MOU, uh, MOU by guiding all so that when they uh, deliver their DSIP or PSIP program money, it will be under... A number of districts in the Eastern Highlands province have been identified as high-risk zones for the national elections. Eastern Highlands Provincial Police Commander Alex Andrasal said police reports have revealed a build-up of guns and ammunition in rural areas of the province. He said that despite this, his officers are well prepared for the elections. Response units from the Papua New Guinea Defence Force and the Police Mobile Squad will be sent to the province to patrol the high-risk areas during the polling and counting periods. Commander Andrasal urged the people of Eastern Highlands to assist the police in ensuring a safe and fair election. Obura one in Aro district, uh, Kainantu district, uh, Okapa district, and some parts of uh, Ngaibena. Train our officers on uh, offences related to elections, criminal offences, summary offences, all these offences that uh, we believe it's going to be committed during the elections. 
We also have a team of investigation. We'll be also engaged during elections. We'll have a response unit team, which includes defense, mobile squad units, and task force units. And we also have uh, the NC NCIU investigators team as well, and um, uh, other teams that are associated with our operations in Eastern Highlands as well. A guard of honor was staged in Southern Highlands to receive Police Commissioner Gary Barkey. The commissioner has been visiting police stations in the country to encourage policemen and women to carry out security operations for the national general election. The commissioner made the first stop at Kaupena Police Post, which is located between the border of Western and Southern Highlands. In Yalibu, the commissioner was welcomed with a police parade. He later inspected the police station and encouraged policemen and women to be mindful of their roles to serve people and maintain law and order. Me like you seems opportunity to look look for some stations believe me. So now me look for Yalibu. Tomorrow by helicopter come to Lomendi and I will travel. So some of stations believe me along South Islands. The Highlands region is one of the biggest area where police will be focusing on. Already there was a deployment of police and defense force personnel to the region. I know that there's quite a number of uh, new personnel from Bomana. You play recently passed out, I think you play come on top of and push them. Um, manpower strength playing me inside of here. Yalebu is, uh, I'm not new to Yalebu because in my young days I was the provincial police commander for Southern Islands. Meanwhile, the police commissioner has also explained the increase in police recruitment training from the current six months to 18 months. Thekla Gunga, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. A graduating computer science student from the PNG University of Technology has created a library application as part of his final year project. The application was built to help students save time and effort when locating book catalogues on the computer. Designer Arthur Imona of New Island Province graduated with high accolades from the university. Arthur Imwana graduated with flying colors yesterday, a degree of merit and a council award at the PNG University of Technology. Imwana is also completing a phone application to utilize the school's Wi-Fi. The idea behind this Methods and Library app is that... He says the application is a token of appreciation to the university. Students can be able to access the library, library catalog without the need of going into the library and actually sitting and waste, waiting and wasting time and then they get frustrated because at the end of say 10 minutes of waiting and they access a computer only to find that the book they are looking for is not available. So the, what the app does is that um, the app kind of um, helps students um, make use of their time. Arthur Imona was one of the 960 students who graduated yesterday in different programs at the PNG University of Technology. Among the graduates were students from Unitech School of Nursing and Daytech Learning Center. The university's vice chancellor, Dr. Albert Schramm, said it was not easy to release the graduates yesterday. Our university has been operating in a difficult environment uh, the last years, and it is important that we reflect on our past to strategize and achieve positive outcomes. Trump points out that the university is struggling financially. It has gotten worse in the last four years. This year, the university's funding was cut from 47 million kina in 2013 to 40 million kina. The vice chancellor said the economic growth for the country without education development is meaningless. We put trust in our graduates to turn this situation around to create order in the civil service 
if they join it and implement rational policies and to set up and lead successful companies that will produce employment for Papua New Guineans. Julie Badui Owa, National Lamp TV News, Lay. Still on graduation, a former lecturer at the University of Technology who taught for 20 years graduated with a PhD in Communication for Development Studies. Dr. Kehatsin retired last year from a teaching career at the university to take up studies. Apart from studies, he worked as the Secretary for Education for the Autonomous Region of Bougainville. He said there are many challenges with the Bougainville education system and it is now his priority going forward. Glad that I'm back in, in Bougainville. Those challenges, they just motivate me to, uh, to do more for my people of Bougainville. Yeah. My teaching career has ended. I've learned a lot from my teaching career. Uh, things have happened that I wanted to see, and I'm glad that those things happened. The, uh, this one is just another achievement. And uh, I've just turned 60 this, this, uh, this, this year. And to me, this is a blessing. This is God's blessing to me. And this I dedicate to my family, my colleagues here at the University of Technology, my, my three supervisors, and everyone who contributes in big and small ways. Lays University of Technology saw the graduation of over 900 students from its main campus and sister colleges Lay School of Nursing and Daytech Learning Centers yesterday. Among them were four foreign students from the Solomon Islands, Jamaica and Timor-Leste. MTV News spoke to a Timorese student who graduated with a master's degree. It was a beautiful morning, optimism in the air, Graduates, parents and guardians marching to a makeshift arena. It's the 49th graduation of the Papua New Guinea University of Technology. Everyone trying to capture a moment in memory. For others, it took some thousands of miles of traveling to make those memories. Uh, in, East, in East Timor, our, my country, they said uh, uh, this country or uh, PNG is very dangerous. Guterres is a teacher at Timor Leste's Technological University in the capital, Dili. He graduates with a master's in mechanical engineering. He comes from a country known for military occupation by the Indonesians. The rule lasted for 24 years of bloodshed and guerrilla wars. But his country is picking up the pieces, rebuilding, and Gutierrez is involved in this process. I was teaching at uh, mechanical engineering. I'm a lecturer at the mechanical engineering department in my university, the Institute of Technology before I came here. With Guterres' endorsement, Papua New Guinea may be a likely choice for foreign students in countries sharing similar development aspirations. Harry Egimbari, National MTV News, Lay. A leading piggery on the outskirts of Port Moresby this week opened a new abattoir aimed at improving the quality of pork to its customers. The state-of-the-art facility at Boroma Piggery Limited's 14-mile operations will be in full operation within the next week. The piggery currently supplies pork at all major supermarkets in Port Moresby. In almost every village in Papua New Guinea, Pork has become an integral part of culture and communities. In Port Mosby, the demand for pork has been on the increase in recent years, with demand peaking at occasions such as Christmas when families gather together for a communal meal. For Boroma Piggery Limited, being in the piggery business has been an interesting journey, with the facility continuously striving to keep up with demand for quality pork from its customers, predominantly made up of major food retailers in Port Mosby. This week, Boroma unveiled its newest addition, a state-of-the-art abattoir. This expensive facility has been designed with the aim of keeping up with world best health and hygiene standards. Yeah, so it's not a cheap project, but as uh, you'll see in the photos, you know, it's, it's world class. Um, the two containers were brought in New Zealand, they were all pre-made, and then all the refrigeration units were brought up from Australia and, and built on site. Once in operation, this facility will be the only certified abattoir in operation apart from the government-run abattoir, also located at 14 Mile. The reason for only two registered abattoirs, the strict quality controls that have to be adhered to. This is bringing uh, from the farm, 
up to the abattoir, uh, slaughtering, dressing, and all that until when the meat is a carcass is inspected and goes into the uh, chiller. And that's where Nakia responsibility stops. For Norio Bianche, the person who started Burma Piggery over a decade ago, the transformation over the years has been tremendous and something to be proud of. You know, you need to pay. PNG is a culture. You want to go and uh, get married, you need a pig. You want to be able to have a, a, a birthday party, you need a pig. You know, everything revolves around pig. This is PNG society. We can do it. Get that motto right. Papua New Guineans, we can do it. Now I don't give a damn who would if anybody else says. You can do it. Don't forget that. You can do it. And for businesses such as RH, who run a dedicated meat section, such advancements only reinforce the belief that Papua New Guinea can adhere to strict food quality standards and sweet, tasty pork. The uh, processes which they use are to a, a standard which you would get anywhere else in the world. Mary Batulo, National MTV News. Stories making headlines overseas when we come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. Paris has once again been hit by a terror attack, the sixth in the French capital in three years. Two police officers were shot. One was killed after a lone gunman opened fire on busy shops. ISIS says the attack was carried out by one of its soldiers. Beautiful streets in all the world, the iconic Champs-Élysées on lockdown tonight, the latest target of terror. Just after 9 p.m., a car pulls up next to a police vehicle. A gunman armed with a military-style weapon gets out, opens fire. One police officer killed, two others wounded, and a bystander hit. This man says he saw it all. He came out and started shooting, he says, but he could have shot us on the pavement and killed more people with a spray of shots, but he targeted the policeman. I heard six gunshots. Sirens blaring, police and emergency vehicles swarm the wide avenue, usually packed with tourists, now a scene of panic. Mesdames and Messieurs, you have to stay back, please. As the area is secured, Parisians, many now accustomed to these emergencies, ordered to keep their hands up. Snipers survey the scene through binoculars because no one was sure at this moment if another attacker was on the loose. Within two hours came that claim, that boast of responsibility by ISIS. This attack coming just three days before the first round of presidential elections in France, bitterly contested, and one of the leading candidates, Emmanuel Macron, in a TV interview when news came of the attack on the Champs-Élysées. President Francois Hollande, somber, emotional, who's seen so many of these attacks during his tenure, speaking to the nation tonight. We shall be of the utmost vigilance, especially in relation to the election, he said. Mosul in Iraq is often called the final stand for ISIS, and the fighting has been fierce as coalition forces push further into the western part of the city. Ground down to its bones, Mosul is so quiet, spectral, where once it bustled. You ask yourself, where are its people? Where have ISIS taken them? And the answer is here. Trapped in the warren of the old city, the densely populated final holdout of ISIS here. It is a stalemate of shoot and wait now, weeks old, where a few alleyways down, ISIS's mass hostage standoff begins. Tens of thousands of civilians held as human shields. You can see from these drone pictures filmed during a massive ISIS counterattack exactly how tight the streets are packed. In every one, hell could await. The Al Nuri Mosque, from where ISIS leader Abu Bakr al Baghdadi gave his only real public speech, its central prize. Each street, window, a bloody slog. The now abhorrent truth clear, but ISIS leaves nothing intact behind it.
there in the distance is the reason why ISIS are fighting so hard in these dense winding streets to hold the Iraqi police and military back. That is the Al Nuri Mosque, very much the ideological heart in Iraq of their self declared caliphate. They want more American precision firepower. Up until now, their help is weak, he says. They have advanced, precise weapons, and with intelligence, they can help us better. So far, astonishingly, Stabrak, aged four, has both stayed in her home and survived. And does not flinch once. There is no life under ISIS, her father says. No food, no water, no electricity. We had to dig a well to pull water. The first thing she's really known is the police. She loves them, like kids in her school. And there, as the shells still rain down, are those who will never leave. And those who do as fast as they can. Far enough out, they are ferried to camps. Brimming with stories of ISIS using human shields, of herding civilians into kill zones to make them die with them. They would besiege us and use us as a human shield, take people and families as they would draw. My brother and the rest of his family are besieged. ISIS hit them with sticks, dragging him away. He's crippled. He can't go anywhere. These voices, a fraction of the cacophony of suffering inside, in a fight that may take months more yet. North Korea went to the United Nations to warn that any hostilities on the Korean peninsula will be the fault of the United States, and Pyongyang accused the U.S. of engaging in a decapitation operation. After decades of relative calm, Beijing is now worried that another armed conflict is about to break out on its doorstep and is on high alert. China has put some bombers capable of carrying cruise missiles on a high alert status, a U.S. defense official tells CNN. The reason they have their bombers on alert is that they can respond should there be a kinetic strike against North Korea. The U.S. also has seen an extraordinary number of Chinese aircraft being brought up to full readiness through intensified maintenance, all aimed at preparing for what the U.S. says is a North Korean contingency, but officials can't say what that contingency might be. They see that, that possibility if North Korea were to implode as their biggest geopolitical worry. As tensions rise across the region, the USS Carl Vinson strike group is expected to arrive within days. Its planes will conduct visible flight operations. U.S. submarines will be able to remain covert under sea, conducting surveillance of North Korean communications if ordered. A joint U.S.-South Korean military exercise named Max Thunder now underway the second largest air exercise held on the peninsula, all aimed at ensuring the security of South Korea and the 28,000 U.S. troops there. No let up in the militaristic rhetoric from Kim Jong-un's regime. North Korea's state newspaper issuing a dire threat saying our preemptive strike towards U.S. and its followers will be the most merciless strike aiming for a complete destruction. And at the underground nuclear test site, where the world awaits a sixth North Korean nuclear test, a curiosity. The latest commercial satellite imagery shows a volleyball game in progress. No one can say how long the Chinese alert status will last, but U.S. officials say they still believe North Korea could conduct a nuclear test at any time. Scientists say they've found a drug that halts disease like dementia and Parkinson's from progressing. They say the medicine works in mice and now they are ready for human trials. This research mouse has a degenerative brain disease which is destroying its coordination. Look how it drags its rear legs. This second mouse has the same condition but has been treated with a drug which has kept it healthy. 
The lead scientist says patient trials could begin in a year with the aim of halting Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease in humans. If I could halt disease when people come to see me, um, then you could maintain a meaningful quality of life, uh, independence and freedom from institutionalization. So we're not talking about a cure for dementia, but drugs that might nonetheless slow Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. These neurodegenerative conditions involve the loss of healthy neurons in the brain. Now that starts with the buildup of faulty proteins, which triggers a natural defense response. This makes the cells starve and eventually die. The drugs prevent the defense mechanism kicking in and so halt brain cell death. These medical research council labs in Leicester have found two drugs which work in mice and which are safe in humans. One of the drugs is already used as an antidepressant. This is the antidepressant, trazodone, which halted neurodegenerative disease in mice. But what works in rodents may not in humans. The patient trial results will be eagerly awaited. Chukai Sports is next. Stay with us for details. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. It was a colourful turnout at the Rita Flynn Netball Courts this morning for the launch of the 2017 season. President Roy Molina officially launched the netball season in the presence of PNG Netball Federation President Julian Lekamaliaki, association representatives and netball enthusiasts. To mark the opening of the 2017 season, the Loki event saw enthusiastic under 10 and under 13 girls taking the court after the balloons were released. <laughs> With growing participation in the competition, a thrilled president, Molina, said the number has increased by 20 new teams. We have in total about 54 clubs. Within those clubs, we've got 91 junior teams and 82 um, senior teams, total 173 teams. The Pomna president also revealed that the competition will implement a new system for the Premier Division, where unlike the traditional competition, this season will see the senior ladies play on Wednesdays instead of the weekends. This is expected to raise the competition standard and create a pool of players for the Super 6 series, which will follow right after the season where elite players will make teams and face off. And there are also talks for a junior off-season competition. We've divided the Premier Division into two tiers, Tier 1, Tier 2, and um, they will have their own separate comp. Um, so we're hoping that by, by the end of the proper season for the other divisions, uh, we will have two grand finals for the, each of the tiers. This season will go on break during the election period and August has been marked for resumption. From there on, the competition will continue till September when it will wrap up just before the national championships. Dini Rostryko, National MTV Sports. It may not be over yet for PNG swim sensation Ryan Pini. The swimmer who hinted his retirement following the Rio Olympics last year may have a change of heart if all goes well. With the 2018 Commonwealth Games coming up in Gold Coast, Pini has recently made known that he will represent PNG one more time if he meets the qualifying mark. The swimmer said he will compete for the right reasons and if the prospect of scooping up another medal seems more likely in the coming months. To football, the National Premier League kicked off the 2017 season today. Southern Conference matches were played at the Sir John Guy Stadium, while the Northern Leg was played at the Sir Ignatius Kilagis Stadium in Ley. The National Premier League Southern Leg staged three matches today. Ekar United went up against Admiralty FC in the second match of the day, which saw the Reds trashing Admiralty five goals to nil. In the first 60 minutes of playing time, Hekari's veteran skipper David Muta led the charges with fellow PNG international Korea Kupaiga making his appearance in the NPL. 
Also making his presence felt was Hikari's infamous striker Tommy Semi, who was also on the scoring sheet giving the fans something to cheer on. The northern leg of the National Premier League competition was played over at the Saignesis Kilaga Stadium in Leh. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. Chukai Sports continues after the break. Stay tuned. Chukai Sports. Welcome back to True Guys Sports. The NCD Easter Cup competition saw basketball, netball and touch footy end their matches yesterday. Volleyball games ended today. Chairman Killer Dick was on hand to present trophies to the winning teams. The grand final matches for netball, touch footy and basketball all ended yesterday with presentations starting from fourth runner-up to first placing. Basketball grand final and trophy presentations took place at Hohola Basketball Grounds, where Chairman Killer Dick was at hand to present trophies to the winning teams. Winners of the 2017 Easter Cup, Southern Wave senior men's and women's teams were presented reigning champions with a shield from the NCDC sports desk. So from Hohola, Mr. Killer was escorted to Pari Village to witness and hand out trophies for netball. PCP Lightning was the winner of the Easter Challenge, taking home the trophy and cash prize of 2,000 kina. I'm honored to have this tournament over here. The governor has given us the chance to participate in this and host in this tournament. We'd like to say thank you for that. Well, I think it's a very, uh, very good incentive program in case of recognizing the talent, the raw talents from the, the community because most of them, they don't go out and play at the national level. So this gives them the exposure. Straight after the netball presentation, it was a short trip up to Upper Pari to witness the grand final game of touch footy before presentations for both men's and women's divisions. We want to uh, strengthen our grassroots competition. I think the grassroots competition is the way forward for our young people uh, who are not able to go into the you know, indoor complex and, and play in the indoor complex. The last and final code to see its grand final matches today and presentations was volleyball closing the 2017 Easter Cup tournament. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. And that ends True Guys Sports. The weather details when we come back. True Guys Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Looking at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region, cloudy with showers in all centers. In the Mamasi region, cloudy with showers in Ley, Medang, Wiwek and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, cloudy with showers in Loringa, mostly finding Kavian, Kokopo and Rabao, as well as Kimbe and overcast with showers in Buka. And in the Highlands region, cloudy with showers in all centres. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. And that's the way it is this Saturday, 22nd of April 2017. From the entire MTV News team, pleasant viewing. Good night.